All right, welcome to my supporter show. Today we're going to talk about what programs I use to make my videos, as I get asked about that a lot. I'm also going to cover my entire creative process for these short stickman videos that I make. And I'm also going to show you why my latest video, Airbnb, was actually a nightmare to make. Okay, so before we start, let me give you the TLDR. Here's all the equipment and free programs I use. You can pause the screen and look at all that. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going. Step one, writing the script, obviously. So, you know, you just got to pop open Notepad and jot down a very basic line by line of what you want to happen. Usually I just put dialogue and events and asterisks. This step can either take just an afternoon or up to a few days, depending on how good the idea is. For comparison's sake, the Airbnb video took two to three days to write, which means I wasn't particularly inspired by the video idea, but I wasn't like stuck thinking of something to write either. Also, as I mentioned on the Newgrounds podcast once, if you want to have an idea like easily available when you want to start working on a video, just keep a pile of them and just keep adding to them. Because the thing is, you have to treat all your video ideas as equally disposable, or you're going to set yourself up for disaster from just staying hooked on one idea and just working on it endlessly. Okay, so once you have that finished script, it's time to make an important decision. Do you scrap it, or do you make it? You gotta be careful what you choose, because you need to make sure you only greenlight scripts that won't be too much work for you to handle. You also have to worry about scripts being actually entertaining too. But once you approve your own script, you've kinda hit a point of no return. Because once you're really far into working on one video, and you suddenly don't like it, you kinda have to buckle down and finish what you started. See, the script for Airbnb was really messy, but it showed a bit of potential, so I decided to greenlight the video idea. But I was completely unaware that I signed myself up for hell. So step two. Bust out your mid-tier USB condenser microphone and audacity. It's time to make some audio. So record your lines as best as you can, doing as many takes as necessary to get both the voice and the recording quality just right. If you're using secondary voice actors, now is the time to send them their lines and specific instructions on what they should give you. Assemble all your voice lines with some public domain sound effects and ambience from freesound.org. Touch up parts of your audio with volume adjustments, compression, noise reduction, whatever you need, and then render your project out into a FLAC file. The audio should ideally only take a day or two to make, but the audio for Airbnb took an entire week. This is the step where you have to double check if you accidentally greenlit a video idea you don't actually like making. If you're noticing yourself working on your video's audio slower than normal, now is your last chance to start over and make a new script. This is exactly what happened with Airbnb. I had already finished all my audio by the time I realized I was bored of what I had written. However, I was trying to finish multiple videos back in June, so starting over and scrapping finished audio would have been a huge waste of time at that time, so I had to force myself to continue. So the next step is the actual 3D. As you may know, the program I use for my 3D is Blender. So with your completed audio in hand, create a list of all the objects, characters, and backgrounds you'll need to assemble. I should probably mention that I have no storyboarding done for my videos, that would take too long. All timing is determined during the audio edit. Anyways, with your list in hand, start putting together the easier things first. I usually start with the backgrounds. I just grab pictures off of Google Images, preferably public domain, and separate any needed layers into different PNGs to import as 2D image planes. Gotta be careful with watermarked images though, apparently I've heard from Tom Fulp that if you use those too much, you'll get actually... <laughs> She'll actually get in legal trouble for using fucking watermarked images. So that's why I had to redo my first two videos, Hackers and uh, the, the Food Cart one. Anyway, sometimes I do create a dedicated set of 3D objects if I need more camera angles, like I did with the bedroom for Airbnb. Possibly the most draining part of any Wave Show video, however, is having to create new character models. I'm not a very strong 3D modeler, so when it comes to making something that needs to be designed with emotional expressiveness and a specific form, my work efficiency slows down a lot. Because of this, I reuse my stickman model whenever I can, but characters like Miller get made from scratch. The only other thing to note is that I like to create things in the EV render engine. I don't have the patience or GPU power to deal with cycles ray tracing, but overall this entire step can get pretty brutal, usually taking two to three days to complete. The Airbnb video took about five. So step four is the big one. It's obviously animation, which is the most important, but it's also more like step 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D, because everything I forgot to do up to this point catches up on this step. So with all the models and such assembled and everything coming together, you gotta worry about lighting the scene. Now in my old videos, I usually just put on a sky texture from HDRI Haven and call it a day, but I wanted to increase my animation quality since I was gone for two months, so for Airbnb, I busted out the custom lamps, gave the stickmen blinking eyelids, and added a slight camera shake, which is why people notice such a quality spike from the previous video. Any other special effects or whatever else are done at this stage too, because the goal is to have the raw render output from Blender stand on its own for the video. I don't want to do any shit in After Effects or any stupid ass post-processing, because I want to keep my files future-proof in case I need to re-render them in the future, so none of that extra shit in an Adobe program or fuck Adobe. Okay, but on this step is also the actual character animation, where these 3D dudes talk like puppets. This is done with Blender's auto key function, where you turn it on, press play, and any object you move in the 3D scene gets that movement recorded. So you have to import your audio into the sequencer, set your playback to AV sync, and possibly enable simplify with zero subs 
subdivisions because you'll need to actually hear the audio you animated and not have your computer lag while you're doing your 3D puppetry. So even then you may have to touch up your recording keyframes after you're done with the dope sheet, especially if they're perfect but a little bit delayed. Just nudge that over. Once you're done, don't forget to turn off auto key. You will never forgive yourself if you forget to turn this off. Do not forget to turn off auto key. And the rest of the animation at this point is done with other Blender features like pose and location keyframes, shape keys, armature stuff, and more. As messy as this all sounds, this step only takes another two to three days to complete. But you already know I was getting sick of Airbnb at this point, so it took another week. If you made it this far, congratulations, you made it to the final step, post-production. And the good news is, this only takes like less than a day to finish, this is nothing. Now, you need to start rendering and making the video thumbnail, so just start rendering out all the PNG frames of your animation, and then get to work on the thumbnail itself. I usually use this set of compositing nodes here, with this Bayer dot pattern, to make things like this. You know, this, that weird retro single color screen print effect that I accidentally made one day, and I haven't stopped using since. It's very finicky though, so expect to sit for for a while wrestling with your materials and nodes to get something acceptable. The thumbnail for Airbnb is eh. It's fine on its own, but next to other red thumbnails, you can tell that I was struggling to get something good around this time. But no time to fuss over thumbnails for too long because it's also time to make subtitles for YouTube. So you gotta pop open DaVinci Resolve and throw in your audio, and then use the subtitle track to write out what's happening on screen at each point. The minimum duration for captions are also pretty small, so I like to get creative and do stuff like this. Once you finish all that, your work gets exported to an SRT file that you can just upload to YouTube. This is also the part where I realized I forgot to put in a subtle wafer watermark somewhere in the video like I always do, but I just wanted the Airbnb done. So, with your render finished, the thumbnail finished, and the subtitles finished, you can now just import your rendered images, add the audio, hit export, and then just export the extra versions for Twitter and Instagram. And you're all done. And you just run over to YouTube, Newgrounds, Twitter, Instagram, and simultaneously upload all your stuff. And you can now finally die in peace. So that was a lot, but I hope you learned something. Chances are, though, there's probably something you want me to explain more since this video is kind of general. So if you're a paying supporter of watching this video from sponsors or Patreon, please leave any questions you have for me in the comments section. Whether you ask about how I did something for one of my videos, or even what my favorite color is, I'll pick some comments to answer for the next video. I also might include questions from other websites too, like the YouTube comment section. But it's going to be a while before you see an answer to those if you're not already a supporter, since these videos don't go public for a while. Until next time though, here's a funny moment from my supporter Discord server. Okay, bye.